Hello everyone and welcome to Season 5, Episode 17 of Pro Wrestling's Top 50. I'm your host Travis McNeil and today we continue our countdown of the Top 50 matches in NXT history with match number 34 on our list which is the 2 out of 3 falls match between Sami Zayn and Cesaro from the August 21st, 2013 edition of NXT television. Uh, you know, doing this countdown, I, I've got plenty of what I feel are hidden gems scattered throughout this countdown. Um, and then I also have matches like this one where if you know I'm going through the top 50 matches in NXT history, it's one that you would expect to be on that list. This is a very famous match. Um, you know, for a lot of you, you might feel that yeah, I maybe, you know, putting on the low end of, of the ranking and maybe would have expected to see it a little bit higher. Um, but we'll talk about that as we go. Um, this match to me is maybe the most important match in NXT history, even if it's not the best. Uh, this is the match where it felt like everything changed for NXT and it really started to click. So up until um, really the debut of Sami Zayn, um, you know, NXT, it had that developmental feel to it, you know, coming out of the ashes of FCW. Uh, you know, we didn't have every independent wrestler with any sort of a buzz getting signed at that point. So you had some wrestlers, you know, and I'll use uh, Neville uh, or Pac, you know, as he's now known, uh, as, a, as a great example where, you know, he was somebody that was brought in with all of these high-flying gifts and he would still, you know, utilize them. But, you know, you could see him changing as a wrestler and adapting more to that WWE style and, and you know, I'll, I'll say it being forced to work that way. So when Sami Zayn was brought in, uh, you know, you kind of felt like maybe it would be the same thing. And I remember... Um, his debut was awesome. Uh, I was working, uh, but I, I made it a point, you know, to take my break from work when NXT aired uh, so I could, you know, watch his debut. Um, that, you know, that everybody's talking about it on Twitter. Um, you know, it was very exciting for independent wrestling fans that this dude, you know, I'll say El Generico, right? <laughs> um, you know, who is universally beloved by all of us. Um, that someone that never, you know, I, I don't think anybody's really expected, at least at that time, for a wrestler like him to make it to the WWE, even though he was so deserving to do so. Uh, it, hell, I, I'm Canadian, um, so, you know, in the early 2000s, basically, my home promotion, I'm, I'm not from Quebec, uh, but my home independent promotion felt like IWS out of Montreal, which is where, you know, Sami Zayn really got his start. And I remember, you know, those early El Generico matches, um, you know, people reviewing them and, and calling them, you know, a backyarder and, and stuff like that because of his look. So to see, you know, this dude literally grow from that into a WWE superstar, you know, was, was quite the journey, um, you know, as a fan for me to even sit by and watch. So, you know, when they were bringing him in and, you know, without the mask, he's basically, you know, Stevie McFly again, or, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, Big Larry from T-Unit or, you know, whatever, whatever Montreal indie, you know, character that he played at one point or another that you want to consider him. Um, you know, I, I wasn't sure how it was going to go. So we had the memorable debut. Uh, he beat, I, I'm pretty sure Kurt Hawkins or, or Brian Myers in like a relative squash, got challenged by Cesaro and beat him in an upset as well. Uh, so this would eventually lead to the two out of three falls match where Cesaro, you know, said it was a fluke that he lost. Uh, and he would prove it because there was no way, you know, Sammy would beat him twice, uh, two falls. Um, this match, it, it's great. Like, don't don't get me wrong. It is a, a great, super fun television match. Um, the historical impact that this match has is outrageous because this is the match where it felt like these two guys were really allowed to be the two guys that they were before the WWE. This is a match very similar to, you know, something that they would have had in Ring of Honor or Chikara or Pro Wrestling Guerrilla or WXW in Germany or wherever, you know, they've met up prior. Um, it, it really feels that way. Um, and from there, I feel like this is the match where we would start to see that shift in NXT, where it would eventually start to become WWE's version of an independent promotion, where they would sign all the hot indie guys, and they really wouldn't lose much, you know, from what they were before they got signed. Um, you, you know, and I feel like everything can be pinpointed back to this match as being that change. So it was so historically, you know, impactful. Uh, you know, in, in the overall scheme of the WWE and NXT in general. Um, why does this match hit on the list at number 34? Um, it's lots of fun, but there are way better NXT matches than this. Uh, these guys, uh, I've seen them, you know, have better matches than this, you know, prior to NXT. 
I've seen them have a better match than this one in NXT, but that's something we'll talk about another time. Uh, but as it stands, the match is an absolute blast. Still, you know, super worthy of inclusion on this list. Uh, but I feel like, you know, it's it's kind of put on a little bit of a pedestal and championed by so many people because of that historical impact that it had. Um, the story in this match, though, is pretty cool. Um, so, you know, Cesaro claims that it was a fluke that Sammy beat him. So what does Sammy Zayn do? He comes immediately hot out of the gates and immediately beats Cesaro for the first fall. Uh, he hits his big flip dive on Cesaro's entrance. Uh, Cesaro is clearly flustered as he gets into the ring. He gets blasted with the Haluva kick in the corner, and that's enough for fall number one. Um, so, you know, in a way, it's two out of three falls. Like, maybe you can kind of feel a little bit short change that you didn't get that first fall, but it's a perfect piece of this overall story. Um, Sami Zayn does a really good job, like, keeping the pressure on. He shows, like, I'm going to beat you too straight. I'm going to beat you fast. I'm not messing around. You know, you're questioning my abilities, and I'm going to show them to you right here. Uh, so, you know, he doesn't really give Cesaro much room to breathe in the early goings of this match. He's out, falls him to the floor, whips him to the steps, you know, staying on him, keeping close. And Cesaro just really can't get anything flowing. Um, you know, Sami Zayn gets, you know, a bunch of near falls. He gets like a crossbody for two. And Cesaro's finally able to like hot shot him into the ropes to take on a little bit of control. And he goes to working a chin lock, trying to start slowing him down. Um, which is what he needs to do. He needs to halt that momentum to be able to get any of his own going. And he does get that momentum going and he starts punishing Sami Zayn with big moves. He hits a big power bomb, blasts him with the lariat. He's hitting double stomps while he's on the mat. Um, but then Sammy again starts to go flowing by doing what he does best, using his speed, using his agility, and counter-wrestling. Uh, he counters a gut wrench suplex into a sunset flip for a great near fall. Cesar goes for like a, a, a running European uppercut in the corner, which is missed, and Sammy pops off a Rana for another really good near fall. Um, Cesaro keeps trying to go back to that chin lock that worked for him, but Sammy is constantly moving and not allowing him to get it locked in. Cesaro goes for a, a tilt a world backbreaker, and Sammy counters that into a schoolboy for a near fall. Cesaro goes for the pop up European uppercut, but Sammy, you know, drop kicks him in midair with that. Um, finally, though, Cesaro is able to grab that chin lock. And rather than try to bring Sammy down to the mat, which wasn't working, he just uses his power and spins him around in the, in the chin lock. Basically like a, an airplane spin or a giant swing. But while he's grabbing this dude by the neck, it was super awesome. Um, and it was enough to just bring Sammy right down to the mat and get, you know, the submission uh, for fall number two to even it up. So, you know, Cesaro's game plan with that chin lock and having to halt that momentum eventually worked out for him. Uh, there's a lot of callbacks in this match to previous spots that they had done earlier. Uh, so Cesaro ends up getting that running European in the corner for a great two count. Um, he counters a, a crossbody attempt by um, by Sammy in due with the tilt world backbreaker that he couldn't hit earlier. Um, he gets his big, you know, impressive deadlift superplex, only good for two. Um, you know, they, they go back to the chin lock and Sammy, you know, does the, the typical, you know, kind of Bret Hart roll back out of that move for another great near fall. Um, after, the, after that happens where he gets that near fall off the chin lock, um, something that I, I thought was really unique and I, I'm going to, not unique I should say, but, but really well done. And I'm going to explain why I liked it is Sami Zayn gets this flash haluva kick in the corner, um, the same move that he won fall number one with, and it only gets him two. So sometimes when I'm reading reviews of wrestling on the internet, I see people criticize when a move, you know, especially in like an Iron Man match or a two out of three falls match or something along those lines, that a move that gets a fall early in the match, with the exception of a submission, right? Because, you, you know, you might want to tap out quickly to not weaken your limb or, or whatever. But a move that works early in the match doesn't work later in the match, um, you know, after a competitor's taken more punishment, right? So it becomes, well, if you beat them 20 seconds into the match with that move, why can't you beat them 20 minutes into the match with that same move? It doesn't make sense. Uh, well, there's a couple aspects at play, and I'm, I'm going to, you know, kind of debunk, you know, that, that criticism that people give. Um, so one, adrenaline is a huge thing, uh, whether you choose to believe it or not, you know, we see fighting spirit and stuff like that all the time in wrestling. Um, when, Sa when Cesaro lost that Yakuza kick very early on in the match, 
He was completely flustered, had no idea where he was, wasn't expecting to get attacked off the jump, got blasted with the move, and it was enough to, to keep him down while he had to try to figure out his bearings and think, like, what is going on? What is happening? Oh, yeah, I need to try to kick out of this move. Uh-oh, I'm too late. Um, whereas later on in this match, you know, he's went through this war, he has that adrenaline pumping, and he knows, like, I need to kick out to, to survive, to stay alive in this match. So it makes sense from an adrenaline perspective. Um, this is not the most flattering story, uh, but I tell it sometimes when people talk about fighting spirit and stuff like that, about how it's not believable. Um, I had a time, uh, probably 15 years ago now, um, where I was running to catch a bus. I was in uh, college at the time, um, and I was going to miss my bus that only came around once per hour. It was the winter time, snowing out, very icy on the sidewalks. As I was running to catch my bus, I slipped on the sidewalk. I landed on my knee. Um, I still got up, ran the rest of the way, sat on the bus ride. I had about a 45-minute bus ride back home. Um, when I got home, my knee had swollen to the size of a grapefruit and I had to basically crawl up the stairs to my apartment, um, to get back home, uh, because it was so swollen and so sore and I could barely move. Um, but after I landed on my knee and took that impact and it hurt at that point, why was I able to, to run, you know, to catch my bus? I had to run a block to catch it. Why was I able to, you know, stand on the bus when there wasn't a seat available, you know, and, and gut through the pain, um, you know, of my knee? It's because I had that adrenaline flowing, right? I had that fighting spirit. There was something that I needed to do in making my bus that allowed me to gut through the pain. And then finally, when I didn't need to do that anymore, when I had reached home, you know, that's where that pain really kicked in. And I just, I was, I had to crawl up the stairs, um, so, you know, that's a real life example of something that can be taken into a wrestling perspective. And I find that it's such an easy criticism for a lot of people to go, yeah, fighting spirit doesn't make sense. Um, but it does, you know, to a, to a certain point. The other uh, thing that I'll mention with it being a Yakuza kick is think about MMA. So, I mean, it's a little different. You drop someone on their head with a pile driver or a power bomb or, you know, whatever, right? But you have strikes that are always going to connect to different levels, right? You could get punched in the face twice in the exact, you know, same way from the same person. And one you could absorb and one, you know, if you take it on the chin a little bit better, could completely drop you. So because Sammy's move is the Haluva kick, that corner running Yakuza kick, you know, maybe he hit it a lot more flush and a lot better at the start of the match than he did late in the match. So if any move is going to be used for a spot like that, a strike makes perfect sense. So I love it. I think it added to the overall aspect of the match with it being that callback. Um, I've seen it critiqued. Doesn't bother me in the slightest. And that's why. Uh, but regardless, we got this great near fall off of it where you think it's the finish because it was used earlier. Um, they hit two of their biggest spots that these guys do together in this match. Um, so one is the cascading code red where Sami Zayn basically comes up over the top of Cesaro, catches him, you know, legs through the arms and hits that Yoshi tonic or code red down the other side. Um, Cesaro takes that, he's such a good base for high flyers and he takes that move so well. Uh, so they bust that out here for a great near fall. And uh, then we get the debut of one of Sami Zayn's most unique moves, coolest moves. I call it the thread the needle DDT. Um, that move where he's on the floor and he runs and hits the dive, you know, between the bottom and middle turnbuckle through the corner post and turns it into the tornado DDT. That move blew my mind when I first saw him do it back in 2004, I think it was. Um, I, I want to say against the Human Tornado at a Jersey All Pro show, if I remember correctly. Um, but to see it done on WWE TV was just so unbelievably cool. And like I said, that move, even in a way, kind of felt like a little bit of that tipping point of like, let's let the indie guys be the indie guys that we signed them for because they're going to connect with the crowd and all of those, you know, preconceived notions against, you know, independent wrestlers doing too much or being too small really seemed at least for a little while um, to, you know, really leave that mindset of the WWE through NXT. Uh, so they hit the, the thread, the needle DDT. Um, Sammy goes to the well once too often in the ring. He goes for a tornado DDT. 
Cesaro just turns it and hulks him up into the craziest pop-up European uppercut um, he, he's maybe ever hit because he just the strength and just deadlift tossing Sammy up. He almost loses him too while he's doing it. It's just unbelievable. He nails him with the European uppercut, hits him with the neutral, neutralizer, and it's enough for the three count for him to get the victory. Um, just showing, you know, at, at this point, Cesaro was, you know, sort of a main roster guy that was also kind of dabbling in NXT. So, you know, keeps him strong with the big victory. But Sami Zayn came out of this match looking so great. If you'd never seen him prior to the WWE, you had to have been blown away by watching this guy gut out this great performance in this match. Um, both of these guys are the two of the most talented wrestlers you know, of the past 25 years, bar none. Um, it doesn't always seem that the WWE recognizes that, um, but, you know, you put them together and you will get magic every single time. Uh, and this match is, is a perfect example of it. Um, you can find this one. Uh, it's available for free on YouTube, which is super cool. I'll link it on my Twitter account, uh, but you can also watch it on Peacock or if you're outside of the US on the WWE Network, of course. You can subscribe to my channel here on YouTube so that you never miss a video. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Wrestling50. And please join me again tomorrow as we continue to count down Pro Wrestling's Top 50.